Washington Journal continues. Congressman Louie Gohmart is a Republican from Texas, member of the Natural Resources Committee. What's your take on what's happening out in Oregon? Well, there's a lot of concern. And, of course, I'm not a fan of violating the law, uh, taking over facilities that you don't own, that you don't have a right to take over. Uh, I know I have a lot of Democratic friends that support those things. Uh, um, when it was called Occupy Wall Street, whatever, even though people died, there were drug abuse, uh, sexual assault allegations, all kinds of things. Um, I didn't support Occupy Wall Street. I don't support occupying federal buildings illegally. But I have extreme concerns about the overzealousness of the federal government especially when it comes to areas where the federal government keeps taking more and more and more land. And uh, it's been done by congressional action, but there's also been basically slush funds every year that uh, the government, BLM, Department of Interior, could grab more and more land. And in fact, Peter, uh, we, we started a website, the Natural Resources Committee I'm on, this basically encapsulates uh, most of Oregon. This is Oregon that we're looking at here. Right, Here's in the that area. area. And if it's Carney a colored County. area, um, and this is zoomed in from that, so here, uh, you know, we talked about the Malheur National Forest, the Malheur Wildlife Refuge, um, and th these areas, as the Malheur National Forest, that kind of maroon area, uh, is part of the wildlife refuge, and this is even more zoomed in, Peter. Uh, but if it's a colored area on these maps, it belongs to the federal government. It's under federal government control. One of the things I did not know until I got involved in the National Resources Committee is uh, normally you think of national forests or wildlife refuge. It's just a contiguous area, one big area. Well, as you see here, those white areas are private property. As the government acquires more and more property, as some people have had their land for generations and government acquires property around them, it opens the door to widespread abuse by the federal government to the private property owner because they have the ability to totally shut people off from their property. And that has happened to the Hammonds over the years. The federal government has come in, and as they've gotten more and more land around them, like th this is the general area there in, um, in Oregon, uh, they are able to totally isolate private landowners. Uh, we have that problem in some of my districts, southern part of my district, down Sabine County, San Artisan County. I was down visiting with the county judge and some other local officials down in Hemphill, uh, it's a problem there. The National Forest is not all contiguous. There are private landowners as the federal government takes over more land, and we have that problem there where they're just told, oh, you've always used this road, you're not going to use it anymore. Well, how do I get to my land? So it, it really can become abusive. And as uh, the dictator Joseph Stalin once said, with power, dizziness. When you're a BLM or Fish and Wildlife official and you have the power to totally isolate a landowner and the landowner becomes annoying, their tendencies to abuse them. And that has happened. And it's something that we in Congress have got to do a better job of oversight and stopping so that these kind of things don't arise. Well, Congressman, when you look at the map, we've got a map of the western United States, yes. and it shows, uh, we'll put that up here in a second, and it shows the different states, how Nevada and uh, Utah, Wyoming, uh, Oregon, are all really managed by the federal government, but then you look at Texas, and it's not it looks like it's free from federal controls. Yeah, there, there are a lot of federal, uh, federally owned controlled areas in Texas, 
but not like Nevada, Utah, Oregon, west of the Mississippi, massive amounts of, of land are owned and controlled by the federal government. And that doesn't sound like such a big deal until you you look, you zoom in on actual areas. These counties that have major portions owned by the federal government have no tax base. Uh, in Texas, our schools get their money from property taxes, largely. And so you have an area like Sabine County, San Augustine counties. These are rural counties. When you take away the most um, productive land that originally was agreed to when the government said, we'll give you 20 percent of all of the proceeds from the use of what is, like it or not, a renewable resource. We're not talking about sequoias, redwoods. We're talking East Texas pine trees. You plant them 15 to 25 years, you can harvest. The people that do that always replant. They manage their forests. And there was significant money that was being paid to the local government, the schools. Things were going great. But then over the last few decades, as that has stopped, that money's dried up. The schools have suffered tremendously because there's no tax base. The federal government takes over that land, and when they do, you can't tax it. They're not allowing people to use so much of it anymore. And uh, that drives up the economic benefit of having the federal government as a, as a neighbor. Well, let's take some calls. We only have a short time sure. with you this morning. And let's begin with Richard in Leminster, Massachusetts. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, yeah, I noticed, though, that we're making trade deals to sell beef overseas, and then they're selling us all their products. And basically all the products are owned by Wall Street. That's why the China goes down, our stock market goes down. I mean, we, we'd be able to get beef cheaper here in, my, in, in our country if we weren't traded overseas. And uh, everybody's fighting over federal lands to raise more cows. Whole, whole food wants to kill off all the horses uh, in, in wild preserves to, so they can raise more cows there. And, and it's all because they want to get more Republicans in to vote to lower taxes for the Wall Street. We Thank got you. your point, I think, Richard. Well, it's Congress an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting point because those two things don't really go together. I mean, I represent a lot of rural folks, and the last thing they want to do is make life better for Wall Street. I, if not the most vocal opponent to the Wall Street bailout, uh, certainly one of a handful of the most uh, ardent advocates against the Wall Street bailout. Uh, we should not be benefiting Wall Street, and yet this president talks about the fat cats on Wall Street, but if you look at his tax policies, the policies of the administration, for the first time in the history of the United States under President Obama, and he's admitted this on camera himself, for the first time, 95% of all of the income in the United States went to the top 1%. That's never happened before. The rich are getting richer. The poor are getting poorer. The middle class is shrinking. The distance between poor and rich has grown. So the people in, in my rural areas, they're not supporters of Wall Street. They do want to make a living. Uh, and, and I love the point about the, uh, the foreign trade. That's one of the problems I've had with both Republican and Democratic administrations, and it was under the Bush administration. I was talking to our U.S. trade representative, and I was saying, I don't think this is a very good deal you've negotiated. And he said, Louie, you got to understand, we're the biggest economy in the world. And so the way administrations, Democrat and Republican, have looked at it, uh, since we're the biggest economy, if we do a deal that benefits another country's economy more than ours, in the end it helps us. That's not true. You make a deal with another country that helps them more than you, you've hurt your country. And I hope at some point, Republican or Democrat, we get some, some people working out deals that realize we've got to make a good deal for the United States and uh, quit doing that more so for other countries. Thank you for the point. Mike is from New Jersey on our Democrats line. You're on with Congressman Louis Gohmert, Republican from Texas. Mike? 
Good morning, Congressman. How are you? Yeah, I think okay. Uh, I, I wasn't surprised with your statement in the beginning where you went on to say that you were against the uh, Occupy Wall Street and you're not for anybody taking possession of land or a property by force or with arms, right. with arms without justification. But then you went on without going any further and condemning what they were doing in Oregon. You went on, a, went on a long speech about why you could understand why it's being done and everything. And though there may be you, some truth in what you were saying, the real fact of the matter is, is that they should be outright condemned. There's, there's no reason that they should be doing what they're yeah. doing or get away with what they're doing. Mike, you and, misunderstood uh, yes, what I said. I wasn't justifying the takeover of the federal property. I wasn't. Mike, go ahead and finish your comment. No, you you you, didn't, you weren't justifying, but you weren't condemning it. You should be condemning it as much as your your opening statement against the Occupy Wall Street when you went on and said about the All drugs right, we and got the, the alleged point, Congressman. Yeah. yeah, I I don't support it. I didn't support Occupy Wall Street. I don't support what they're doing in Oregon and taking over land and facilities they do not have a right to take over. You want the word condemn used? I didn't use it about Occupy. Wall Street, and I didn't use it about taking over the federal facility. So I felt like I was pretty even-handed on that, which is more than I can say from some of your Democratic leader friends who were all out there in support, uh, including my friend uh, Grijalva that was on uh, Washington Journal yesterday, totally supportive of the Occupy Wall Street with all of the terrible ramifications that came from that. And yet, totally, as you had hoped I would do, condemning of the, the taking old facilities. I say it's wrong in either case. Uh, it's wrong in either case. That said, and, and I do think if you violate the law, there should be consequences. You should be punished, and that includes people that take over facilities wrongfully in Oregon. Uh, I, I'm a former judge. I would sentence people that trespass criminally including anybody that's doing so in Oregon. I don't know how to make that any clearer. Uh, that said, in Congress, we have an obligation to look at injustice wherever it occurs. And there's injustice occurring in Colorado. There's injustice occurring in some of the areas of my district in East Texas. And those are things we have an obligation to look at. The Justice Department should take care of criminal trespass violations on federal property. I hope that the, we don't see another Waco incident where they violate posse comitatus as Clinton and, uh, and Reno did using um, United States military equipment to attack American citizens. That's unlawful. It shouldn't happen in Waco. It shouldn't happen in Oregon. I, I've been for demilitarizing all the different branches of government. Uh, I imagine it was a Democrat that was run off the road by three black Suburbans, and he yanked out of his car, thrown to the ground, boots on his back, handcuffed, and then was hauled away to jail in Alaska because he mailed a package that was supposed to go ground only, checked ground only because he was a law-abiding person, but didn't know there was a regulation that says you have to put a sticker with an airplane with a line through it on there. They accosted the man, ruined his life because he didn't put a sticker on. That's abusive by government, and those are the kind of things we need to stop in Congress. Congressman, I don't know if Trinidad, Texas, your district. It's immediately south of my district, and, immediately uh, south. Just it's right. on the front page of the New York Times this morning, talking about John Joe Gray. Yeah, Oregon standoff just started. One in Texas seems endless. He was a carpenter, an anti-government militia who was charged in 2000 and or released in 2000 and has been living at his home since then. The charges were just dropped. Were you, are you familiar with this I case at all? I was not familiar at all with that. No, and I hadn't seen the Times this morning. Uh, but that is incredibly abusive. I know... Um, Kirk Weldon was in Congress uh, my, my freshman term, and uh, he was reading on the floor uh, about the FBI having information before 9-11 and was really calling the FBI out. And right before his election, I believe that was 06, they did a very um, 
out front public invasion, serving a warrant on his home, I believe his daughter's home. They went after him. They made a big deal that he was a target before the election. That caused him to lose the election, and as soon as the election was over, they drop everything. Those are the kind of abusive tactics. I don't care whether you're Republican, Democrat, or an aardvark. You don't deserve to be mistreated like that by the federal government. Eric's calling in from Fairfax, Virginia, here in the suburbs. You're on with Congressman Louis Gohmert Eric, welcome. of Texas. Hi. Uh, good morning, Congressman. Uh, thank, good morning. thank you for your service, and uh, thank you thank you for C-SPAN. Uh, comments I'd like to make, I, I, first of all, I think it's very unfortunate uh, what this group is doing in Oregon. Uh, clearly not uh, a good ending for anyone. I don't see how it's going to turn out good for anyone. But I also think that one of the one of the factors that Roe is supposed to do what they're doing, they're, they've been defeated by circumstances. Uh, you know, between our between our, our policies, and, uh, it is not very good. And so when you have people that think the government is taking everything from them and taking more and more from them and they don't have a chance to improve their lives, this is what we get. So I think ultimately when this is over, hopefully this will be incentive to, to take a hard look at, at how we're leading this country because there's a lot more to this than just Oregon. And I, I just hope it all works out for everyone. Well, I share your concerns, Eric, about this not working out well in the end for the people involved. My understanding is the Hammonds didn't want to, folks to come in and occupy the facility illegally, that they did. Uh, but it sounds to me like the Hammonds have just been beat down for decades now by the federal government. They've basically thrown up their hands. You can't beat the federal government. Well. This is supposed to be a republic where we have representatives, public servants that are elected, and we're supposed to represent the will of the people. And when we stop representing the will of the people and allow the government to get this abusive, then we're all in trouble. So um, I agree. I, I'm hoping that we will be able to take a closer look at abuses of the BLM, of the Interior Department, and of every department. Uh, where they may be abusing the public. Uh, it's not just the VA. And I share Newt Gingrich's sentiments. He, he told some of us yesterday, you guys got to quit talking about reforming the VA. Get rid of it and get something that actually helps veterans across the board. We need to be looking at more of that. And when federal employees are worried about keeping their jobs, they'll be a whole lot less abusive of American citizens. Congressman is chair of the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee at Natural Resources. Do you foresee your uh, subcommittee holding hearings on what's happening sure in Oregon? Do. I sure do. And that, I think, was part of Eric's point. We need to, to be, this should generate interest in getting to the bottom of it. So we've been talking with uh, members of the committee about having those very hearings you're talking about, Peter. And uh, I hope you'll be seeing those in the near future. What's but, your relationship with the head of BLM? Um, <laughs> we've Currently. had some interesting discussions at prior hearings, but uh, I have been very concerned with the abuses of BLM and the obfuscation of the BLM leadership. Um, we're not getting satisfactory responses on what they've been doing to people like the Hammonds. Uh, it is very disconcerting. And I mean, just most Americans, they want fairness. Yeah, that's what most of us look for when we hear stories, whether it's from C-SPAN or anywhere else, are people being treated fairly. And when you hear that somebody like the Hammonds were getting pushed around for years, efforts to take their water away, keep them from traveling roads they always had, being able to graze their animals as they had a right to do. You say, well, that sounds a little unfair. And then, uh, you know, fires going for years without any consequence, and then a new group comes in, and this time, years later, they're prosecuted. They do jail time, and then uh, somebody else comes in and says, you know what, they didn't do enough time. Uh, as a, somebody that was a judge, 
years, handled thousands of felony cases. To have somebody come in after I labored over what was an appropriate sentence and just wipe it out and say that wasn't good enough, it's very offensive. And it should be, I think it offends, it offends the consciences of, of many Americans to hear these guys did their time, properly sentenced, uh, after a judge agonized over the right thing to do, he heard all the evidence. It, it sounds like revenge. It sounds like abuse. And it's the kind of thing we shouldn't be doing. Michael is calling in from Whiting, Maine. Hi, Michael. Hi, Independent Michael. Line. <clears throat> Excuse me. How are you doing? As far as I know, okay, Michael. Hope you're all right. Yeah, I'm doing, doing well. I'm just calling to make a comment about basically the political double talk. Um, if I'm not... Mistaken, sir. I believe you were in favor of the transatlantic uh, pipeline. Am I the correct? Trans you mean the, you mean the uh, XL pipeline from Canada XL to pipeline. XL? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, I, I was. Okay. I was supportive. And wasn't that pipeline going to take thousands of acres away from farmers in eminent domain and give that right away to uh, foreign co uh, companies? It's going to create a pipeline that a foreign country could use, but it's to the benefit of the United States. Uh, in East Texas, we have a lot of oil and gas. We're used to having pipelines all across property, and we understand it, it's how we won World War II. The East Texas oil field was the largest known reserve during World War II, if not for those pipelines, not for the uh, oil being produced. Uh, we don't have the gasoline to defeat the Germans at the Battle of the Bulge. And so, you know, we understand it's not a fun thing to have a pipeline through your land, but if the rest of the country is going to benefit, uh, there are necessary things. So, yeah, it's one of those necessary evils. Jeff is in Indianapolis, Democrats line. Please go ahead, Jeff. Hello. Hi, Hello? Jeff. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. Yes, you know, I, you know just, I find this really interesting as an African-American. You know, uh, these people are terrorists. These people in uh, Oregon are terrorists. They're no different from Al-Qaeda or the Ku Klux Klan, matter of fact. But, you know, I know they get a pass because of their complexion. If these would have been a bunch of black guys, a bunch of Hispanics, oh, and heaven forbid, a bunch of Muslims. This gentleman right here be calling for the National Guard and the ATF to wipe them out. So, you know, what's the double standard? These people are, they're terrorists. You know okay, well, over. thank you, Jeff, uh, for y your opinion. Uh, I, I first thought he was talking about the BLM being terrorists, you know, the way he abused it, they've been abusive of people and kept them from using their own private property. Uh, and he's saying it's because of their complexion that they're being treated the way they are. Uh, as I understand it, uh, they haven't killed anybody. The people occupying illegally, they need to be punished for occupying federal property illegally, and they should be punished for that. I, I see that, understand it, support it. But I, I don't really get this. It, Jeff, it sounded like was okay with them being abused because he says because of complexion if they had been blacks or, or Muslims, then they would have been abused. And yet, I'm not, Peter, I'm not seeing that around the country, whether it was, uh, I mean, I've, I'm seeing massive abuse around the country by people, whether they're white, black, and uh, it's only when people come out and engage in criminal conduct that's a threat to the community that the police normally get this active, but there are an awful lot of people of color who have violated the law and have not suffered any consequence from the law, whether it was from looting or other activities. Um, I, I think this is, um, again, an overreaction to, to skin color. I, I look forward to the day, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, when people are judged by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. I look forward to the day when there is no race box on any application 
I said, it doesn't matter. We don't care. Uh, so it, it grieves me much to see the racial divide that has been growing bigger under this president. I, I mentioned in an interview that even though I didn't vote for or support President Obama, I had hoped, well, I looked for silver lining. You know, he said he was going to bring an end to No Child Left Behind. I thought, well, that'll be a great thing. Well, he didn't. He's doubled down on that. But I thought maybe it will be like um, um, in high school, uh, I had a black coach. He was my favorite coach in all of high school. I, I really loved the guy. He, he was a great coach. And he happened to be black. And playing for Coach Williams, um, he brought our team together. He was equally tough on people, whether they were of color or were white. And because he was black, he was able, I felt like, to bring us together like never before. It was a great thing. I would do that. And um, it's there's been more of a divide. I was Peter, I found it rather ironic that some left-wing publication started talking about my mentioning my favorite high school coach. And <laughs> immediately it went up that I talked about my favorite uh, coach as a basketball coach. I never said basketball, but the leftist uh, reporter assumed, well, if he's black, it must be basketball because they're not good at anything else, which was an affront to me because he happened to be a football coach. Uh, you know, so I found it amusing. A person that thought they were liberal of mind immediately generalized, well, if he's black, he must have been a basketball coach. That wasn't the case at all. Congressman Edwin Christian tweets in, you know, the Patriot Act blurred our rights under the Bill of Rights. The government can now come in and take your property anytime. The Patriot Act, and, and I have similar concerns about the Patriot Act, uh, but I don't think of a provision under the Patriot Act where the government can just come in and take your property. Uh, the bigger concern, legitimate concern under the Patriot Act is when they can come in and snoop on you or get access to documents of yours or spy on you. Uh, those are the things I had concerns about, Peter. And this was under the Bush administration. I was a freshman when the Patriot Act was uh, reauthorized. And I have grave concerns about Section 206 and 215. I led the charge uh, behind the scenes and, and had some rather abusive meetings uh, from my own Republican committee leadership um, trying to get me back off of demands for um, sunsets on those provisions. But the Bush administration had people that assured us, look, the law says that there has to be ties with international terrorists. So this is no threat to any American citizen. And I said, well, it does say, or clandestine intelligence activities. What does that mean? Oh, don't worry about that. that, that you know, nobody uses that. Well, it turns out they were abusing that. They were monitoring American citizens the whole time, and they misrepresented what was being done. So that was a total affront. It's been abused by both the Bush administration and by the Obama administration to even greater extent. So I share the concerns about the Patriot Act. It's not so much the taking of property under the Patriot Act. It's the snooping on people uh, in ways that I think would be unconstitutional. Jadin, Jadin, Jatinder in Stockton, California. Easy on for you to say. Plug, re <laughs> Republican <laughs> line. Please tell us your first name. Uh, Jatinder. Thank you. you Jatinder. Jatinder, good to talk to you. All right, go ahead. Uh, I, I would say I agree with the federal land takeover because, like, for example, sometimes hmm. you have farmers. Farmers uh, will uh, sometimes sell their land to house uh, people who want to build houses. The federal government took over uh, natural resources uh, like hmm. farming mm -hmm. or something like that, and uh, then uh, we would have more. Uh, actual opportunity and more uh, natural resources, uh, far as like uh, 
mm-hmm. food and uh, other things. And, uh, you know, I would agree with it. I, I also agree with the pipeline, too, because we help out the American uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, economy boost, just like uh, this uh, 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 uh this current uh, Obamacare is supposed to help out with such uh, so many trillions of dollars worth of a week selling oil instead of uh, uh, taking uh, buying oil all the time. All so right, Jatinder, I, I, I think we got your point. We're running short on time. Well, and it, it does make a great point. And when we're talking about a pipeline, Kendra makes a, a good point. We look at it as similar to a highway or a road. Sure, when we build an interstate highway from north to south, Canadians are going to end up using that road. Uh, Maybe Canadian or Mexican businesses are going to end up using the road, too. And even if the landowner doesn't particularly use an interstate highway going through his or her property, we consider that is for the greater good. Most of us were furious when the Supreme Court uh, came down with their decision saying it was okay to use eminent domain to take a farmer's property if somebody was going to subdivide it and therefore produce more taxes. Merely producing more taxes was never anticipated to be a reason to take somebody's land just because somebody else would make more money off of it. We believe in private property rights, and that's where we should stop the government from using eminent domain just to produce more taxes. All right, and you have uh, approximately 60 seconds to answer this one. This is Kai tweeting in. So the BLM are terrorists, but using eminent domain for pipelines is a necessary evil? Question mark. I'm confused. Well, it's like I was saying, a pipeline, really, it's uh, similar in concept to... uh, uh, So, yes, if if you don't use eminent domain for a highway, people are not going to be able to travel as fluidly as they could. Same with a pipeline. Somebody's property is going to have to be used in order to to allow the the oil or gas to travel. So, yeah, eminent domain works for that. It's going beyond that where I have serious problems. Louis Gohmert, former judge. He's a Republican congressman from Texas, chairman of the Natural Resources Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigation, looking for hearings on what's happening in Oregon shortly. The House is in session now, working.